which graph best represents the velocity time graph for a ball that is dropped from rest and bounces repeatedly. So if it's dropped from rest, that means the initial velocity is zero. So therefore it can't be C. The initial velocity for graph C is not zero, so therefore we know it's not gonna be that option. So it's either A, B or D. And I think the quickest way to get to the answer is then to think about the fact that the ball bounces repeatedly, which means that it goes up and down, up and down. So when the ball is going downwards, let's say that this is the positive direction, so there is a positive velocity. And then when the ball then bounces, it goes upwards, and for this scenario, there will be a negative velocity. So because the ball is continuously going up and down, the velocity is continuously switching between positive and negative, and therefore the only graph which has positive and negative velocity is B. So that must therefore be our answer. But I feel like we can talk about this much more. We can describe exactly why the graph of a bouncing ball looks like what it does in option B. So let's do that next. So let's consider the forces acting on a ball. So we have the only force is weight, if we ignore air resistance that is. So whether the ball is moving upwards or downwards, so either stage of its bounce, the only force acting upon it is going to be weight when it's just in the air. And in those scenarios, when you have an object that's only experiencing weight, it's in free fall. That's what free fall is defined to be. And in that case, the acceleration will just be 9.81 downwards. The gradient of a velocity time graph is acceleration. And if, when the ball is in the air, the acceleration is always 9.81 downwards, then the gradient of the graph, the velocity time graph, for when the ball is in the air, should always also be 9.81. And that's what's shown in graph B. So we have regions where the gradient is constant, so these regions here. Those are the regions where the ball bounces, and then, or rather, just after the bounce, it goes up and then comes back down. So when the ball is in the air, is represented by these three regions, and the gradient for those regions is 9.81. So those three regions represent when the ball is in the air, and these regions here represent when the ball bounces. So to explain that, let's come up with a numerical example. So let's say when you drop the ball, so it's at rest to begin with, so the initial speed is zero, it then hits the ground, and let's say just before it hits the ground, the velocity is five meters per second downwards, and then it bounces. Let's assume that this is an elastic collision. So if it's elastic, that means there's no loss in kinetic energy. If that's the case, the upward velocity will just also be five meters per second. And then eventually it gets to the top again, and the final speed would be zero. So let's see this journey that we have here on our graph. So we start at rest. So this orange point here corresponds to what we have here. And then it drops, it hits the floor. It hits the floor at this point. So that will be when the speed is five meters per second. So that's what we have here. Well, I guess I'll put all of this in purple. So that region represents this part of the graph, the bounce. The speed is five meters per second in the positive direction, which let's say is a downward direction. And then the velocity reverses and is now minus five meters per second. And because the bounce happened so quickly, that's why this change in velocity seems to be almost instantaneous. There's no real change in time. And then the ball travels upwards, ends up with a final speed of zero, and that represents going to this blue point here. So that'll be the blue line that I'm coloring in. The first stage is the orange line. And then the cycle repeats. So this represents being dropped and then bouncing on the ground and coming back up. And that cycle just continues over and over again.